everyone feels jealous. It's a normal human reaction and there are literally psychological theories which prove that we're basically wired to want to compare ourselves to other people. But what nobody tells you is that it's actually very easy to erase all of those envious thoughts from your head forever. And I know that because I used to feel jealous of my peers, celebrities, people on social media, my family members and even my friends sometimes. But if you were to ask me now, when was the last time that you felt even slightly jealous of someone? I, I can't recall, like I honestly cannot remember since I mastered this new mindset. And so in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys all about how you can completely eliminate comparison, jealousy, envy, and FOMO for good. And as always, all of my jewelry is from my jewelry brand at Sajana Studio. It's linked below in the description and my bracelets and these necklaces are coming up in the next drop of the brand, so make sure you follow us on Instagram so you don't miss out. Chapter one, let's fully understand this concept because only then can we get rid of it. Envy comes from wanting something you don't have. This is about having a desire for someone else's advantages or successes and then feeling resentful as a result. Whereas jealousy comes from a fear of losing something you already have. And this is more about rivalship, possession, control, and feeling threatened. And then we have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. This is when we compare our journey to other people's you know we assume that they're in better places or we should have gone to that party or we're missing out on that event or a better career or better opportunities or better friends we always feel like people are ahead of us or doing better than us and then the overarching theme of all of these terms is comparison which is the thief of joy and together we're gonna put that thief away for good so let's get to the root of why we compare and get envious in the first place sadly it can be caused by other people someone in our life maybe it was our parent our friends an ex-partner suggests that we weren't good enough or we were inferior or maybe they constantly compared us to somebody else maybe your teachers played favorites maybe your parents pitted you and your siblings against each other maybe our exes found someone more attractive than us whatever it is when people suggest that we're inferior and we're not good enough we can take that mindset on and then we internalize all of those beliefs and they become a part of our insecurities and then it becomes a habit to start comparing ourselves because other people didn't believe in us another cause of consistent comparison is low self-esteem this is also when you feel inferior but you have little to no hope of your capabilities and what you will be able to achieve in your life and as a result it's easier to feel envious of others than actually believe that you can get those things as well another big cause of jealousy is having a scarcity mindset I mentioned the scarcity versus abundance mindset a lot in my videos and it just goes to show how much this can negatively impact your life because when you look at the world through the lens of there are scarce resources out there and there are limited opportunities and there's not enough space for everyone to succeed, then this will breed envy because now you feel like you're in competition with everyone else because there's not enough space for everyone. But to finish this chapter off, I just wanna mention that it's normal and you shouldn't feel like a bad person or beat yourself up for having these feelings because they are very much natural. And that brings us to chapter two envy so like success comparison trying to level up your life feeling like you're stuck everyone else is achieving loads of things or you get social media fatigue because everyone else's lives seem so perfect and you want what they have so let me set the scene for you i was finishing university and i was feeling very fed up with my life i had no idea what i wanted to do and the thought of working for somebody else and going into a nine to five didn't make me feel very good i always knew that i didn't want to do that and instead i wanted to make my creativity my career but things just were not working out for me and i fell into a a comparison spiral instead. I envied those who lived such a fun life on social media being their own boss and I wanted the same thing. So the secret is that I decided to use those people as a source of inspiration rather than resentment. I thought if they can do it why can't I? So I got to work instead and I invested in myself. I started using Skillshare to get ahead and gain more knowledge to be the best at what I do. I started using Skillshare because it was the best path of action I could take when I was feeling stuck. By learning new skills and focusing on getting 1% better at what I do every single day, it took my attention away from comparing to everybody else's journeys. I got greater control over my career and my passion when I took the creative confidence and silencing your inner critic class on Skillshare. My favorite part of this class was the lesson called embracing your weirdness. I realized that I was actually allowing the thought of myself being cringy to hold myself back in my creative career. 
And taking these classes really allowed me to hold myself accountable because there was so much knowledge out there that I didn't know. And I thought, how could I ever blame the fact that I was stuck in a rut on the fact that other people are getting ahead and that life is unfair. No, I just had to use that energy more productively. So if you feel like you're stuck in a rut and you really want to get ahead and get that taste of success, then I highly recommend Skillshare because it literally helps you create new career possibilities. So you guys can join Skillshare and become a member with your first month free by going to the description, checking out the links. The first 1,000 people that use the link in the description will get one month free of Skillshare. So you better hurry up. You can't keep continuing with this victim mindset, okay? I know how frustrating it is when you've been putting in the hours and you've been trying so, so, so hard to get to your dream. Let's say you wanna be a singer and you're comparing yourself to everyone else out there who has already made it or blown up like that overnight. It literally doesn't matter. They are all irrelevant because they're not you. Everyone's life paths are laid out in a completely different, unique way and you need to start being grateful for yours because you're comparing yourself to people's journeys that are not meant for you. It's the biggest waste of time you just can't see why it's happening the way it is right now but in a few years time you will look back to where you are now and how you are struggling and laugh and realize it was all for the best because it took me two years to get 2,000 subscribers on YouTube and then in two months I went from 2,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers and now I get to do YouTube as my full-time job and I look back and I laugh because I'm like, I can't believe I ever compared myself to anyone else. This was always meant to happen to me. I just had to work a little bit harder and wait a little bit longer and have that patience and faith that everything will work out for you. There is space for everyone to succeed. Just because other people got there first doesn't mean you're not gonna get there. And on top of that, you should never be comparing your chapter one to someone's chapter 20. You don't know the 10,000 hours of work that other people have put in to get to where they are now. Step number two to overcoming envy is the scarcity to abundance mindset. This is all about moving from the I have to be in competition with other people, there's not enough space for everyone to succeed to of course I'm going to succeed and guess what everyone else in this room can also succeed. In fact I'll give them advice and I'll cheer them on and I will help them because their success does not threaten mine, it doesn't put mine at risk. A scarcity mindset will literally lead you to feeling like you're not enough or you're incomplete because you believe that there are scarce resources for everyone. It leads to hyperfixation and increases jealousy and stress because you're focusing on short-term coping, like what is this person doing and what is that person doing and how can I be better and why is this not happening to me instead of long-term problem solving, which is what is the action that I can put in today to make me feel better about this, to improve my path, to help me get to my goal faster. When you have an abundance mindset, you're more optimistic. All of your self-doubt fades away. It's about having the utmost confidence in yourself and your abilities. Why the hell would a person with an abundance mindset ever be jealous? I know I'm gonna get my cake. Just because you're eating it first doesn't mean I'm not gonna get mine. Enjoy it. Enjoy it because my time is gonna come. That's fine. Thinking big and embracing risk rather than always playing it safe. Because when you do that, when you hide away your money and you purposely don't tell people advice that they really need, you are signaling to the universe that you're actually very insecure about your capabilities and so you feel like you need to compete with everyone. And it just shows that you don't have faith within yourself and it's literally gonna block your manifestations from coming to you and finally it's about comparing yourself to your best self rather than other people the only person you should be comparing yourself to is who you were yesterday step number three to overcoming envy is use them as inspiration jealousy is not a bad thing you can use it to your advantage every single time you see something and it triggers envious feelings of in you use it as a clue this is a clue your body and your mind is telling you you are desiring this thing and you don't like that this person has that for a reason. It's because you want it for yourself. It's triggering you because your mind is telling you that's where you're meant to be. It's a clue into your future. Now it's all about your perspective and how you choose to channel that envy. Are you going to compare yourself to that person and go down this trap of envy and feel bad about yourself and like a victim and feel prideful that, oh, why do they have it and I don't? No. Instead, you're going to remain unbothered because if they can do it, so can I. So for example, let's say I see a girl out and about in public. Her makeup is divine. She is the best outfit and I start feeling envious because I want to look like that. Why isn't my wardrobe like that? Why do I not carry myself with that same energy? I feel threatened. Instead of feeling threatened, I'm going to think, I'm not envious. This is me being guided on my path, being guided to the next phase of my life. So now I'm going to take this thing that I like and I'm going to refine my list of goals. And then when I go home tonight, I'm going to think, how can I now 
earn more money to buy that wardrobe? How can I work on my confidence and my self-love to radiate better energy and carry myself with that pride and confidence that that girl was doing? Because just because she has it doesn't mean I can't have it. So envy is pointless. Think of it like a real life Pinterest board. Everybody is just walking inspiration for you to use so that you can level up. And lastly, step number four to overcoming envy is manifestation. Yes, that's right. You can literally use envy to manifest. As we already know from the definitions I gave in chapter one, you actually desire the thing that you're envious of. But the thing is that envy pushes your desire away. Negative energy literally repels your manifestations from coming to you because your jealousy represents your feelings of scarcity and your lack of self-belief. So then the universe follows that belief. So instead, the key is to convert that negative comparison energy into positive law of attraction energy. This is so you can actually attract what you desire rather than waste time feeling inferior in comparison to it. So firstly, you need to affirm that what you want is actually on its way to you and you are capable of achieving it, affirmations will be in chapter five. And then my personal favorite is to literally visualize yourself having that thing, living that life every single day. You need to visualize all of your desires coming to you. You need to visualize you finally becoming your best self. You are not just who you are right now. You can create a new and better version of yourself by tomorrow. And I'm gonna be honest here, delusion is gonna be your best friend in this. This is something I still do to this day. Literally when I'm falling asleep at night, I'm closing my eyes, I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm envisioning myself living out all of my dreams. Traveling the world, living in my dream city, living in my dream apartment, being wealthy, having my dream collection of Chanel handbags. I'm, I'm like watching a movie of me doing all of those things in my head and I know I'm going to get those things. I don't know when and if it takes another 10 years then so be it but I know I'm going to get it. So when I see all of these people living that dream wealthy lifestyle online, I'm not threatened because I'm like, I'm gonna get it, it's fine. What, what is there to be jealous of? Chapter three, overcoming jealousy. This is more to do with comparison with other people. Being threatened by other people, wanting other people's beauty, feeling jealous of the privilege that other people have. I went long periods of being single and isolated and only spending time out and about on my own when I was solo dating and focusing on myself, okay? And when I was out and about, I would see so many cutesy romantic couples doing PDA and all of that stuff. And naturally, a lot of people would resort to thinking, oh, I hate seeing all of these couples and it's reminding me of my own loneliness and like go get a room and all of that. Not once did I think that. In fact, I would look at these couples when I was on a date by myself and think that is so cute. Just because you're in a happy loving relationship and I'm not doesn't emphasize my lack or mean that I'm not doing life correctly and I need to fix up. No, it doesn't. I'm extremely grateful to be single, to be on this date by myself. I think I'm in a wonderful phase of my life and I have the rest of my life to achieve what you have right there. There could be a couple that are acting like they're very much in love but are secretly miserable and wish they could leave or miss the days that they were single and had more freedom and didn't have to constantly consider somebody else's needs again. Because at the end of the day, everyone always in any situation can find something to be jealous about. It doesn't matter whether you're in a relationship or you're single or you're wealthy or you're famous or you're unemployed, it doesn't matter. Everyone can find lack in their lives. Not everyone has everything. Those confident, secure people aren't so happy because they don't have anything to be jealous of. Everyone has something to be jealous of. They're happy and secure and radiate this amazing, contagious energy, which makes you feel insecure because they're choosing to focus on what they have in their life, the abundance they have, not the lack that they could easily pick out just as everyone could. The next tip is to create an alter ego. And this step is gonna help you finally become obsessed with yourself so you don't feel threatened by anybody else's successes ever again. Creating an alter ego is all about maximizing your confidence and everybody needs this. Even Beyonce herself, you can Google this, had to come up with an alter ego when she would get nervous on stage. She named her alter ego Sasha Fierce. And so whenever she felt like she wasn't capable of doing something or that she wasn't that successful or she didn't look great, she wouldn't say I'm Beyonce, she would say I'm Sasha Fierce and she would go onto the stage and be that version of herself. You need to imagine the most confident, attractive, magnetic version of you, name them and then step into that energy whenever you find yourself comparing yourself to somebody else or thinking that they're better than you. The whole point of an alter ego is that it's a version of you that's limitless. It doesn't have any lack. They are abundant in all areas. They are so grateful for the person they are. 
Your weaknesses are your alter ego strengths. Your insecurities are your alter ego's confidence. And so it links into what I always say, which is fake it until you make it embody that magnetic, confident energy until it naturally becomes a part of who you are. Step number three to overcoming jealousy is questioning yourself and getting to the root of whatever you're jealous of. Why is this triggering me? Why is this a problem for me? What do I need to gain from this situation? What do I need this person to stop doing to make me feel better? Why do I need them to do that? I'll give you a personal experience of mine as an example. I used to feel extremely jealous and threatened of my past boyfriend's ex. So this is my first ever boyfriend and he used to speak about his ex-girlfriend all of the time. So I found myself comparing myself to her all the time and I was like feeling inferior, not feeling good enough in comparison to her. And due to that comparison, I automatically assumed that she was more attractive than me or she understood him more. She was a better girlfriend. She had a better personality. And I realized all of that was coming from my own insecurities, my own lack of self-worth because I didn't believe in myself. So I was easily allowing this other person to be better than me in my head. And then my ideal situation in this scenario would be for my boyfriend to stop talking about her, to say that I'm more attractive, to hype me up and not her. So from those questions, I can then create the solution. And that solution is, oh, I'm not a super jealous person. It's the fact that my boyfriend is allowing there to be a situation where I'm jealous of another girl. If anything, it should be a situation where other people are jealous of us as a couple. He is creating a situation where I can have feelings of jealousy towards his ex. That should never be the case. So solution, dump him. And then another solution is why do I automatically believe that this girl is better looking than me? Why do I feel inferior to her? She's not better looking than me. Nobody is. That's not because I have the most perfect face and I'm better than anyone. No one's better looking than me or anybody else for that matter because everyone has a different face. That's it. One person could see you and not see any beauty within your face and another could think you're the most beautiful person they've ever laid their eyes on. Beauty is subjective, so no one is better looking than me. They just look different to me. Step four to overcoming jealousy is self-care. Jealousy comes from low self-worth and low self-esteem. So from here, you need to think, how can I start incorporating more caring and loving practices into my life so that I can start feeling better about myself? For example, are you exercising? Do you have a workout routine? Not because your body needs to look better, but because your mental health literally needs your body to move so that you can thrive and feel happy every day. Are you taking the time to reflect and meditate and be present with your thoughts? Or are you just scrolling for hours on end unconsciously? And then as a result, allowing what everybody else is doing on social media to be the main concern in your brain, rather than using that time and energy and brain power to then instead relax and unwind. Are you taking care of yourself through the foods that you eat? Are you constantly eating foods that are high in sugar, that are processed, fast food? All of these foods that will literally make you feel sluggish and tired right after. You're not gonna be feeling like your best, most confident, baddest version of yourself after eating that. There is literally a reason as to why eating fruits and veg is one of the key steps to balancing your chakra. And do you know what happens when you have an imbalanced heart chakra? You experience feelings of loneliness, jealousy and judgment. So please don't ever skip on the self-care because once you get comfortable with neglecting yourself, you also get comfortable with putting people on a pedestal above you because you have low self-esteem. You get comfortable with living every day in a low vibrational state. Step number four to overcoming jealousy is a gratitude journal. This is all about acknowledging the fact that everyone is handed their own obstacles, pain, trauma, and challenges in life. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And instead, writing three things you're grateful for every single day. I know it might seem trivial, it might seem so basic, but it works wonders. You have to constantly remind yourself that your life is filled with love and abundance. Sure, there might be a bunch of things you don't have, but by shifting your focus on the things you already have will immediately eliminate any feelings of jealousy because you're finally so thankful for what you have. Why would you compare yourself to anybody else? I would never want your life or your beauty or your this or your that because I'm so thankful for what I have. And I'll give you a personal experience of mine. I don't have my dad in my life. I haven't had my dad in my life since I was 10 years old. And I remember going to my best friend's house and I was sat in her kitchen and I was watching her interact with her dad and how much of a great, loving, very close relationship they had with each other. And I sat there and I watched and I started feeling jealous because it was such a beautiful connection they had and I knew that no matter what, I'll never be able to have that. I've lost that now and that's not something I'll be able to gain and yet my friend, 
She just gets it. Why don't I get it? It's not fair, right? Wrong. Just because she has it doesn't mean she doesn't also experience a bunch of pain and trauma and insecurity like the rest of us. In fact, I know she does. So just because she has something that I don't have doesn't immediately make her life better than mine. And just because I have things that she doesn't have doesn't mean that my life is better than hers. I have gone through a lot of pain and I have lost a lot of things that most normal people have that I will never be able to get back. And that's not just fatherlessness. It really does go beyond that. And yet I would never want anybody else's life because I know I'm the controller of my own destiny and I know that I can go out into the world and gain so much more love and acceptance and connections and bonds with other people. Trust me, just because somebody else has a couple of things that you wish you had, trust me, you would not want to swap your life with them because in turn you will be handed all of their sufferings as a result and everybody has that. Step number five to overcoming jealousy is become your own it girl. You literally need to become obsessed with yourself. This is the mindset that I have and everyone else needs to have. I love everything I do. I love the way I think. I love the way I act. I love the way I execute things. I love the way I strut in the street. I love the way I carry myself. I love everything I do down to the mistakes I make, how I make them, how I learn from them, how I move on from them. You were put on this planet and you were made to be different. Don't ruin that by trying to be like everyone else. I'll give you another example. I've always been naturally very slim. To some it's a desirable body type, to others it's not. I've been told by both men and women that I'm too flat that I don't have enough curves, that I'm built like a door. So then when I go out into public and I see slim thick girls with curves and a bigger bust and a bigger butt, I don't feel jealous. Because I'm like, regardless of what anybody says, I love my body. I was given this body, this body suits me the best. Your opinion of me doesn't decide how I should feel about myself or whether the qualities I have are desirable or not. I am the decider of that. And once again, it comes down to the fact that you could be comparing yourself to somebody else's body, thinking they must be so confident and feel so beautiful and love their body every day. They could look into the mirror every day and hate what they see. They could feel so insecure. You could see a curvy girl with the best body proportions that just wishes she was super skinny. So it really doesn't matter about gaining so much more, getting the best body, getting plastic surgery, acquiring more wealth. It's about becoming obsessed with the current version of yourself because you can get more and more and more and more and the jealousy won't stop and the chase for more and becoming better won't stop until you finally become grateful for who you are now and give yourself acceptance of the way you look and are right now. Chapter four, overcoming FOMO and realizing you are your only competition. This is for those of you who feel bad every single time you open social media and you see all of these pretty people and you instantly start comparing your life to them, thinking everyone else is doing better, living their dream life and you're just behind. And to those of you, I say you are literally comparing your bad days to somebody's good. You are comparing your everyday, real, authentic life to somebody's filtered picture on Instagram. Somebody can literally post 30 Instagram stories a day, taking you through every single thing they do in their day and still miss out about 20 things that went wrong that day. And I know this because I do the same. Nobody goes on Instagram and tells you that they cried themselves to sleep, that they were stressed, that they procrastinated for two hours. We all do it. So while you're looking at people on social media or even in real life thinking, oh, they're in such a happy relationship or they have their dream job, this and that, how do you know? How do you know? Even if you know the person in real life, how do you know the emotions they feel and the thoughts that go through their head when they get home after a long day? How do you know they're not arguing with their partner every day? How do you know they're not just tired of their job and they wanna quit? And this is where the social media strategy comes into play. I did this two years ago and my life has never been more peaceful. The unfollow, mute and block button are about to become your new best friends. First of all, I am followed nearly every single celebrity, all of the Kardashians, all of the influencers, everyone. I unfollowed everyone I went to school with that I don't still talk to and then I muted all of the people that I actually know who I feel like just flex to the gram or I'll see things and I'll start comparing myself to them. Mute. Because I am not about to go on my own phone and have my day ruined by Instagram. The second that I removed all content on social media which was normalizing a standard of beauty which is in no way realistic or comparing my normal everyday life to influencers in LA who are extremely rich the happier I got. Because if you were to go to your local supermarket right now, would you see a bunch of people that look like who you follow on Instagram? Would everyone be in super extravagant outfits? Would everyone be wearing Rolex watches and holding Chanel bags? No. 
because that is not real life. But you are scrolling for hours on end, consuming all of these pictures of people living that lifestyle, and it tricks your brain into thinking that that's the norm and that's what you're supposed to be doing. The only way to overcome that is to remove it from your eyesight completely. And instead, make social media a positive place. I'm not a believer in saying, spend less time on social media. I love social media. I go on social media every day and leave it feeling refreshed, inspired, and having gained more knowledge. You need to be following people on Instagram, TikTok, even Snapchat, YouTube that either inspire you, educate you, or spark some sort of positive emotion. Maybe it's comedy, for example. The next mindset shift is remembering that every single situation in life comes with its own little pretty package of stress. No phase of your life that you will enter will be stress-free. It doesn't matter how much success you acquire, there will still be a new set of problems that come with it. For example, when you're single, your stress and your problems is, oh, I don't have any affection, or I'm bored, or there's no one to take me on a date, I'm lonely. When you're in a relationship, it's, oh, I never have time for myself, or now I'm arguing with my partner, or I have to figure out how to get along with my in-laws. There's always a new problem. When you're in a nine to five, it's, oh, I hate waking for somebody else. I work too many hours. I don't make enough money. I don't like my boss. I don't like my colleagues. When you finally take the leap and start your own business, then it's, oh my God, this is too much responsibility. I'm working even more hours than I was before. I don't get to take the weekends off. Therefore, it's all about perspective. And now let's go through 10 affirmations that you can start using today to help you overcome your comparison. I release jealousy and welcome positive energy. I am safe, secure, and confident enough in myself that nobody else could ever feel like a threat to me. I release the need to validate my worth through the comparison or competition of others. I only compare myself to who I was yesterday. My confidence grows stronger and stronger every single day. Other people's success does not symbolize my lack. I am so thankful for everything I have in my life. I am so lucky to live my current lifestyle. Everything I want is already on its way to me. I am abundant in all areas of my life. And finally, I am not diminished by the success and happiness of others. And let's finish this video with homework. These are things you're gonna start doing right now if you find jealousy creeping back into your life. Number one, your reading material is going to be a book called The Defining Decade. This is all about what it's like to compare your 20s to somebody else's, compare your life, and just feel stuck like you're not doing enough. And the second book is called How to Fail by Elizabeth Day. Task number two, you're gonna go onto your Instagram right now and unfollow and mute everyone that makes you feel envious or promotes an unrealistic standard of beauty or just makes you feel like you're not enough and instead you're gonna follow a bunch of creators that radiate positive vibes, that post positive quotes, that make you feel better about yourself. Task number three, you're gonna get out a journal and write down five things that you are so thankful for about your life. Why your life is so amazing and why you're such a lucky person and how so much more abundance is gonna come into your life as a result. After this, you're gonna go to another page in your journal and you're gonna write about a time that you wished for what you currently have. This could be so simple like passing your exams, learning how to drive, getting a job, being able to afford your favorite piece of clothing. And this will make you realize that you actually are making progress. Everything you wish for, when the time is right, you do actually get. Progress is all that matters, the pace does not. Homework task number five is that you are going to write a list of your goals in your phone. Bonus points if you make a vision board in real life or a digital one on Pinterest. Homework task six, you are gonna pick one of the goals from the list you wrote in your phone, pick one of them and then commit just one hour this week to doing something that will get you even 1% closer to achieving that goal. You're gonna take your attention and focus away from what everybody else is doing and actually put action into getting yourself closer to those desires you see in others. And lastly, you can save the audio of all of the tips I mentioned in this video by downloading the podcast to this video, which is linked in the description via Spotify and Apple Music. So you can listen to this video all over again when you're on the go. And that brings us to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new if you did make sure you comment down below and let me know because i love reading through all of your comments make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because i make new videos every single week and i will see you in the next one i appreciate you thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one Mwah.